Your company, Massimo, is a leader in the pulse oximetry space. Can you talk to us about what pulse oximeters are and why they're important? Pulse oximeters measure your blood oxygen saturation and pulse rate non-invasively. The reason that they're critical is, first of all, in the operating room where they anesthetize the patient. Uh, the anesthesiologist is breathing <laughs> for the patient. So to know the oxygen is critical for the feedback loop for them to properly titrate you. But then it found its way into the intensive care unit, recovery room, and even now home, uh, because if the oxygen is wrong, either your heart or and lung is not functioning properly, and it'll warn you. And so people might know them, right, because they're the little things, the sensor wrapped around the tip of your finger, right, that tests the, test the oxygen. That's correct. If you've ever been to a hospital, you probably had one of our sensors on your finger. So pulse oximeters existed before Massimo was around. But talk to us about what your breakthrough was with the technology. The biggest problem with pulse oximetry right after it was introduced is that it didn't work if the patient moved or if the patient had low blood flow from low blood pressure called low perfusion. Mm -hmm. And the industry had given up. They thought those were just inherent limitations of the physical measurement of pulse oximetry. We invented a way to, in real time, accurately monitor the oxygen saturation, even during motion and low perfusion, using very sophisticated signal processing, adaptive filters, parallel engines. False alarm rates used to be 70 to 90% of the time. Uh -huh. It got dropped to about 3%. In the NICU, the problem of false measurement was even more acute because unlike adults whose eyes are developed, those preterm babies in a NICU, if you over-oxygenate them, you damage their eyes. So 12% of the babies in a NICU were getting terrible eye damage. 2,000 a year in our country were going blind due to false measurements of pulse oximeters. So you have a really interesting and unique life story um, can you talk a little bit about your journey from, I know you grew up as a, as a child with your family in Iran and then you moved to the United States. Talk about when you came here and why. Yeah, I feel like my life story is a little bit like that movie, The Jerk. <laughs> Hopefully no one's going to get cross-eyed with my product. But yeah, I, um, you know, I, I lived in Iran until I was nine years old. I have incredible memories, fond memories of Iran. Beautiful country, wonderful people. Uh, my family moved to Alabama in 74. My dad wanted to get his engineering degree. And we lived a really humble life there. And then in 77, we moved to San Diego. So you started at San Diego State when you were 15, and you graduated with a master's degree and an undergrad by the time you were 20, how old Two, were you? 22, old. yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. And, and then you, only, you started Massimo just a couple years after that? That's correct. That's correct. I started math with 24, but I worked all the way through. <laughs> uh, so while I was going to San Diego State University, I worked for Burroughs, which turned to Unisys. So I started working as an engineer around age 18. Uh, so by the time I started math with 24, I'd, I'd been at it. You for, had an experience. For a so while. were you going to school part time while you doing this? Or no, you... full time. I worked part time and went to school full time. Yeah. Wow. So the job that you had at Anthem. After, was after college. After college. It led you yes. into I moved world. to Orange County and mm -hmm. I came for first worked for Bell Industries and then Anthem and that's where I got my macro view of the world and was, there was a lot more than just making computer chips. And your job at Anthem, I mean, you, you know, you talked to me about how there was this client that wanted you to build this hundred dollar low cost pulse oximeter. It was that pretty much how the job worked? Like you would just work for whoever Anthem needed you to design the, the semiconductors or whatever for, well, for the client? The, re the reason Anthem was interested in me, I had really good experience with semiconductor chips, custom chips, mm -hmm. ASICs. So I helped a lot of customers turn their big product into small little chips. During that time, I met this company that was trying to make a low-cost pulse oximeter. Mm -hmm. I thought they were the third company. There was a lot more out there. They asked me to take over that project. And I went to my boss and I said, I really would like to do this. Uh, he said, well, you can do that as Moonlight. It's got nothing to do with what we're doing. So I worked again back to doing two jobs like I did in college. I did that while I did that uh, weekends and nighttime.